In the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, Proverbs, chapter 11, I will read verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth a soul is wise. Hmm. In the book of Genesis, Genesis, Chapter 19. I want to read some verses there. Genesis chapter 19. I read from verse 15 all through to verse 16. And when the morning arose, then the angel hastened Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife. And thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and they set him without the city. And it came to pass, verse 17, when they brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. <laughs> hmm. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, Chapter twenty two, I read verse three. A prudent, a wise man, foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple. The fool pass on and are punished. The first chapter of Proverbs I read said, The wise, the prudent, shall inherit glory. But shame. Shall be the promotion of the fools. In the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 17, the angel said to Lord and his family, Escape for your dear life. I want to join the two verses together for the topic of tonight. And what I call the topic of tonight is Be wise. Escape for your dear life. Be wise. Escape for your dear life. I want everyone that are sitting down, walking, listening to the sound of my voice to be wise tonight. 
I want everyone that will watch this cassette in their offices, your home, the one that will watch this cassette abroad to be wise. Be wise because judgment is ahead of you. Be wise because you are not going to be here forever. Be wise because a day is coming when the people that will be talking about you will be saying when our late mother was alive. And that late mother is you that is sitting down. Be wise. Because a day is coming when people will be saying when our late Lord Bishop was our life. And the late Lord Bishop that they were referring to is you. Be wise. Because a day is coming. When they will be saying when our ex-president was alive. And that ex-president that they will be referring to will be you. Be wise. Because a day is coming. When people will be saying when our ex-governor was alive. And the ex-governor they are referring to or they will be referring to then will be you. Be wise. Because a day is coming. When people will be saying when our former director was alive. And the former director that they will be referring to then will be you. There is nothing you can do about death. Death is inevitable. A day is coming, you will die. If you used not to think about death before, start thinking about death now. God that we serve used not to deceive. He will tell you the truth whole heart. There was a day he called David. He said, David, I love you. I will bless you. I will increase you. I will bless your children's children after you. I will lift you up and I will lift your kingdom up. But the day is coming. When you will grow old, you, David, will die. Listen to me. God said he's going to bless him. He's going to increase his kingdom. He's going to bless his children after him. In fact, God fulfilled his promise by giving his son a wisdom that no king under the sun have ever since then possessed it now. But with all the blessing God said, David, you will die. I want you to bear it in your mind that as you are sitting down, as every one of you came to this place gathered under these canopies in this program manifest 2012, and all of you have been hearing the word of God since Monday, a day is coming. <laughs> When people will gather for your burial. I'm talking to you. I told you something yesterday. That as I'm standing here. I am talking to you directly. Don't say he's talking to some people. Not some people. But you. A day. There was a day. When they announced your birth. Your father. Went to your mother's parents. And your father told them. Mama thank God. Oh, my wife gave back to a baby this morning. Everybody began to doubt. Hey. Male or female. 
Oh, they said male. Or they said female. And they were dancing. And they began to laugh. People began to come out. What happened? And they announced your birth. As there was a day they announced your birth. So a day is coming when they will announce your death. There is nothing you can do about that. Therefore, be wise. In the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 14, I will read verse 14. For we must needs die. All of us. If I said, what is your need now? Some will say, I need money. Others will say, I need baby. Another one will say, I need good health. But the Bible is saying something here. That there is a need. That every one of us cannot escape. And that is death. For we all must needs die. And are as water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Hey. Therefore, be wise. If you are here today, you trust on your wealth. <laughs> you trust on your money. You are saying, let that fool talk whatever he wants to say and let him come down. In fact, the way he was speaking grammar proves to me that he's not well educated. I studied in America. I studied in London. His English are not correct. I beg, let that fool say whatever he wants to say and let him come down. I am blessed. I am rich. Everybody knows me in this worry that I'm blessed. Listen to me. <laughs> that riches will fail you one day. Money will fail you one day. Wealth will fail you one day. Do you know what happened? The children of Egypt, they trusted in their wealth. They believed in their money. They trusted in their positions. They trusted in what they have achieved. But one day, many fail, money failed them. Let's read it. In the book of Genesis, I told you before I started that I'm going to go through some verses of the scriptures before I move forward into the testimony. Genesis chapter 47. Let's see what happened. Genesis 47. Don't forget, Egyptians, they trusted in their wealth, money, gold, riches. But Genesis chapter 47 said something that you must know that a day is coming when it will also happen in your life. Genesis 47, I read verse 15. And when Money failed in the land of Egypt. I read again. And when money, when riches, when wealth failed in the land of Egypt, a day is coming when money will fail you. Money will be there in your bank, money will be there in your Zenith bank. In your every bank. In your first bank. <laughs> Money will be there. In your world bank. But it will fail. Because. Of a truth. Money is powerful. But. Money has a limited power. A day is coming. When money. Wealth. Riches. Position. Will fail you. Before that day we come, be wise now and escape 
for your dear life. Don't forget where we stopped yesterday night. We came to the junction of separation. And I told you what I saw at the junction of separation. I told you that on my way after death, on my way to glory land, when we came to the junction of separation, there was a huge demon, very dirty, black in complexion. His countenance was horrible. And he was shouting. And I told you that though they did not tell me that he was welcoming people, but I perceived in my heart that he was welcoming people to hell. Hell is not a place you can go. Hell is not a place you can abide in a minute. If you get to a if you get to hell in a minute, it will be as if you have been there for more than 100 years. Just a minute. Hell is terrible. Hell is not a place for enjoyment. And those who are asking for mercy in hell are asking for the impossible. If you want to weep, weep here now before you die. If you want to call upon God, call upon God here now before your death. Those who are weeping in hell are fools. Hell is a place of weeping forever. Hell is a place of torment. The rich man in the Bible in the book of Luke said, Father Abraham, tell Lazarus to go and dip his finger in the water to cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Hell is a flaming place. A place of flame. Once you get to a, once you get to hell, nobody will come to take you out of that place. You will be there forever and ever. My brethren, escape for your dear life. Don't joke with hell. And don't allow your friend to tell you he's telling lies. If you allow your friend to tell you that man is telling lies, when you get there, you will have to blame yourself. And if you get to hell before you start regretting, that regretting will be forever. Weeping in hell is forever. Regret in hell will be forever. Hell is not a place you get to and Savior will come and deliver you. It is too late. Everybody will believe Jesus and they will accept Jesus as their Lord in hell. But it is too late. This holy living that the men of God are preaching to you that you reject. This salvation message they brought to you that you reject. This living right the men of God brought to you that you reject here on earth. After your death, you will want to be saved, but it is too late. You will want to live right, but it is too late. You will want to be, obey God, it is too late. This prison, you workers in this church, the preaching, the men of God are telling you to go and preach to people that you said, I don't have chance. You will be preaching in hell forever. In the torment. In the flame. But it is too late. Your preaching, you will be useless. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Don't go to hell. 
your money will be useless after that. Your position will be useless after that. Your greatness will be useless after that. Your authority will be useless after that. Everything you have here, here on earth, after you breathe your last breath, it will be useless. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise and escape for your dear life. When I got to the front of that demon, I looked at the face. The face was terrible. I turned to the right side. That narrow and rugged way. Don't forget the angel that was shouting hallelujah here. I passed through the narrow way. As I was going, there was a golden fence, very tall. I did not know where it came from, neither do I know the end. The narrow way ends at the front of that fence. Listen to me. When you get there, because the day is coming when you will get there, you will not see door. No handle of the door to open the door. It is God himself that will open the door. No wonder David said something in the book of Psalm 118. Open your Bible to that place. Psalm 118. I read verse 19 to 20. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. When I got to the front of the fence, I heard a sound. Gee! The door opened by itself. I went in. And before I looked back, the door closed. The narrow way I was following from the junction of separation is the one I met. And I was following the narrow way. As I was moving forward, it got to a time I saw a very big house made up of gold. Very big house. The day you got there, you will remember what I'm telling you now. This big house was very big and very high. But it was made up of gold. When I get to the front, the door opened by itself. I entered in. Then the door closed. I met several dead people that had been dead before me. All of them were there. I knew nobody in that hall. Except a woman that came to meet me in that hall, which I will speak about hereafter. Hmm. As we were moving forward, nobody is talking to other. There is no friend on the way to heaven. Don't allow anybody here to deceive you. Your best friend will go away from you on the day of your burial. Hello? Your husband will forget you on the day of your burial. Immediately they bury you. He may be in the room, your master bedroom in the night and she will be saying, Oh my dear, we did not say it like this. You told me you are going to be with me forever. Is this the end of everything? They brought food for her. She did not eat. Because of the love he had for you. They brought food for him. He did not eat. Because of the love he had for you. But in that night that you are meditating. Oh, that she is meditating on the bed. Right on the bed there. If you come into that same room. That you have been living together. Sleeping together on the same bed. And I 
as she's thinking or as she's meditating about you crying and weeping, if you touch your wife and say, my dear, he looked like this and saw you, he will not say my dear again, no. He will be shouting, dead, dead, dead. He will run out from the same bedroom. So, everybody will forget you and forsake you after your death. Be wise. Be wise. As we were moving forward. All of us were moving forward. I didn't know anybody. It got to a time. I saw people that were in my front. They were shivering, shaking. I said, ah, what happened to them? What happened to them? What happened to them? Nobody to ask. People were moving forward. I was moving forward with them. It got to a time that the same fear came over myself and I was shaking. As we were shaking, my heart was beating. My heart was beating fast. Fear got hold of me. You will get there one day. Everything you want in this world, you will forget them. Everything. Everything. Do you know the reason for that fear? Do you know why all of us were shaking before the judgment hall of God? In the book of Isaiah, open your Bible to that place, chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. I read verse 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fear, fearfulness had surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? That is the reason. Why the people, the dead that are in that hall were terribly afraid. Because they were before the judgment seat of God. Be wise before you get there. Amend your way now before it is too late. Amend everything necessary now. Everything you're supposed to do away with. Do away with them now before death will get hold of you. Don't forget, as you pass through every day, so you are approaching your sepulchre. I'm talking to you directly. You. A day is coming when they will be singing the song of death and the song of burial because of you. Because of this, be wise. Be wise and escape for your dear life. As we were moving forward in fear and trembling, it got to a time I saw a very giant angel standing afar off facing us. He folded his hand looking forward to heaven. When the judgment comes to you, they will make mention of your name. For example, Abraham, Yakubu, you will say, Sir, before you end up saying, Sir, you will not know what take you before that angel. You will be right there in the front of the angel. Be wise. For a day is coming. Every sin you have ever committed. They are open wide before God. In fact. The memory will come fresh into your head. The one you forgot. Here. Now. All of them will come back to your memory. 
You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sin that no one else should know. You cannot hide it from God. Brethren, I'm telling you what I saw. You know what used to happen before, sir, my Lord? I used to tell people because I was a Muslim background. So I used to tell people, when they are preaching, I mean, shut up your mouth. Who has ever gone to heaven? But that question that I used to ask in those days, I am now a living witness. Listen to me and be wise. Don't allow the devil to deceive you and lead you into perdition. There is a destruction ahead. I pray for somebody here that in the name of Jesus shame shall not be your promotion at last. But Yoruba's adage used to say the person that will die better will do that by his himself. Any makure or water and yofifa. Listen and listen well. Immediately they make mention of your name. Anywhere you are in that hall, I don't know. God is great. Something will just take you from where you are and bring you before the angel. You will be open your eyes and see you standing right in the front of that angel. <laughs> God have mercy on me. Then you will be hearing the voice from heaven. He, the voice will be saying, You were saved on such so date. So so year. If you are here tonight, you are not saved. You are just coming to church. You have never repented and with all your heart gave your life to Christ. Make sure you get saved tonight before death will get hold of you. The only person that death and Satan respect is the one that is saved by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. That is the only person. Death used to be afraid of the person that is saved. Satan used to be afraid of the person that is saved. If you are not saved, if you do not give your life to Christ, you die in your sin. <laughs> you are doomed forever. Hmm. So, you will be hearing the sound of the voice. You gave your life to Jesus and so so year, so so month, so so week, day, hour, minute, second. Everything we don't count here on earth, they count it very important in heaven. And you will say, Yes, sir. And the voice will say, Your sin shall be required from you before you can proceed. Immediately, that voice ends up saying, Your sin shall be required from you before you can proceed. The angel that lifted up his eye will bring his eye down. And there is a kind of reflection like a consuming fire coming out of his eye. There is a big stream by the right side. Then, the angel will face your head with the reflection coming out. It will be as if your whole body is going to be burnt off. So the person will be shouting, Ah! are shouting the angel will not pity you he will be looking at you gradually from your head to the tone of your feet gradually 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 to the tone of your feet when he finished searching what is he searching for he is searching for the sin you committed that you did not repent of before you die listen to this the day you 
with all your heart confess all your sin to God. That day, God will forgive every sin you committed. Your sin will be blotted out by the blood of Jesus. And your name is being written in the book of life. That very day. And the joy of the Lord will come upon your heart. But after that day, I said it would have been better that we die that day we gave our life to Christ. Because after that day, you continue in your sin. The sin you continue in that you did not repent of before you die. All will appear on the screen. All. All. That is why the Bible says we should be examining our life daily. Blessed are those that are washing their clothes, their spiritual garments daily. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, redeeming the time for the days thereof are evil. Every day are evil. So you need to be redeeming yourself every day. Washing yourself in the blood of Jesus every day. Examining yourself every day. God, have I committed any sin? God, what have I done that is wrong? God, if you are about to go and sleep, you need to say, God, here am I. If there is any sin in my life again that will make me to die while sleeping and go to hell, Lord, use the blood of Jesus to wash me because no unclean thing will inherit kingdom of God. Immediately the angel looked at the screen. And there are sin in your life you did not repent of before you died that appeared on the screen. The angel will shout. It will be like the roaring of lion. He will shout, Ah! The whole heart will be shaking. And he will look at your face and say, why didn't you wash yourself from this sin before you come to this place? And you will see the dead man be crying. Hey, please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Some will say, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go, up, go back and amend my way. The angel will be shaking his head. It means it is too late. It is not yet too late now. You are hearing my voice now. It is not yet too late now. It is not yet too late now. Don't forget the topic of tonight. Be wise and escape for your dear life. It is not too late now. But listen to this. 30 minutes after this time, it can be too late. An hour after this time, it can be too late. Tomorrow morning can be too late. But now, it is not yet too late. The person will be shouting... He will be looking at the angel. He will kneel down and say, please, please forgive me. The angel will say, I'm not the one. I have no power to forgive. He will say, okay, okay. What can you do for me? Do something. Do something. The angel will be looking at the person and he will be shaking his head. Because that is the level of his power to search for your sin and get what you have done that you did not repent of. That is the level of his power. He has no more power. And as you are shaking, crying, weeping, so the sound will come from heaven. And the voice will sound with a clear voice saying, Depart! Immediately you hear the word depart. Because there are two words in heaven. Depart or proceed. Immediately you hear depart A wind will come from nowhere It will carry the dead up The dead will shout On the top of his or her voice He will say God have mercy on me Remember everything I did when I was going to church Remember everything I did when I was paying my tithe Remember everything I did when they said they wanted to build church Oh God remember But it is too late the wind will throw the person free. And that person is going to hell. They will make mention of another person. The judgment was very terrible. And very fast. 
For example, let me assume that the people that were there that I met in the hall of salvation were about 700,000. Within 30 minutes, the people that were there were not more than 100,000 again. And listen to this. With all the time I was there, I did not see anybody they said proceed to. Saved one woman called Elizabeth. Elizabeth came into that hall after me. So the judgment was not as you came in. The judgment was as this voice we call your name from heaven. When Elizabeth was coming in, brethren, whoever you may be, the, what Elizabeth did is what I want you to do tonight. Love your soul. Love your dear soul. Be wise and escape for your dear life. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise. Forget about theology. Forget about the level of your education in the Bible. Forget that now. I'm not, I'm not talking about your knowledge. I know you have doctorate degree in theology. Put that one aside now. I'm telling you what I saw. What I was a witness of. Forget about how many times you read the Bible. That is not what I'm saying now. Listen to me. The judgment ahead is terrible. Escape for your dear life. Don't allow the devil to deceive you and destroy you. If you are hiding under any canopy, rush out of that canopy. I'm not talking of this canopy. If you are in cult and you are a leader in any place in the church, if you die in cult, you are going to hell. Listen to this. If you are a witch sitting down here and you have a big position in the church, <laughs> you die as a witch, you are going to hell. Listen to this. If you have used human being for money ritual <laughs> and you are sitting here this evening, this time is when God wants to have mercy on you. Don't deceive yourself. Confess your sin with all your heart tonight. Amend your way before death will come. When death come. And you are standing before the judgment seat of God. Hey, hey. No lawyer there. Under judgment day. No lawyer there. Under judgment day. There is no lawyer there. No lawyer there to hire. My mother, come and plead for me. My reverend, come and plead for me. My law bishop, come and plead for me. There is nothing like that. Nothing like that in heaven. No lawyer there on the judgment day. No lawyer there on the judgment day. There is no lawyer there. No lawyer there to hire. I want you to be wise. I want you to be wise. I want you to be wise. Great judgment is ahead of you. Listen to this. As Elizabeth came in, she was crying. She was shouting, Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have, no matter how powerful you are on earth, you will be weak when you stand before the judgment seat of the living God. He was shouting, Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. When the judgment came to her turn, they made mention of her name from heaven. God knows your name, He knows where you live. 
He knows every secret thing you've done. He knows every hidden thing you did. Everything you do that nobody remember. God remembers all. I remember. I repeat. God remembers all. When they made mention of her name, Elizabeth, they made mention of her husband's name, she said, Sir! She was weak. Standing before the great judgment ahead. And the voice said, You gave your life to God, to Christ in so so year, so so month, so so week, so so day, so so hour, so so minute, second. The woman says, Yes, so. Then they said, Your sin shall be required from you before you can continue. As the angel wanted to bring that terrible eyes down to start searching. So Elizabeth shouted. Jesus. Have mercy on me. Jesus appeared. When Jesus appeared. Come and see. The crown of stone on his head. I don't know. How the soldiers, Roman soldiers, where and how they got the crown, they crowned the Lord Jesus with. The turn entered into his head, Oliver. If you see how he was wounded, every part of his body, from his head to the turn of his feet, were wounded everywhere. The beating was so much. The torture was so severe. Just because of useless Abraham Yakubu. Just because of you. Jesus did not commit adultery. You are the one that committed adultery. Jesus did not tell lies. You are the one that is telling lies every day. Jesus did not steal. You are the one that is stealing. Jesus was not in the cult. You are the one that is in the cult. Jesus did not fight. You are the one that is fighting every day. Fight your wife, fight your husband, fight your children, fight everybody, fight friends. You are the one that is doing it. Jesus was tortured because of you. He suffered because of you. He was crowned with a crown of stone because of you. As Jesus appeared, so the woman fell on his feet. Oh my God. Jesus suffered. The people that are, uh, that uh, made up made the case called uh, the passion of the Christ. They tried, though. but the torture was more severe than that because the man that acted Jesus in the passion of the Christ he wore something like paint. If you watch it. But there is nothing like paint in the, in the body of Jesus that I saw in the hall of salvation. Immediately Jesus appeared in that hall, every angel and dead were kneeling down. They knelt down. Look at me here. All of them bowed down, but I did not bow down. Though I knelt down, but I did not bow down. I was looking at Jesus. He looked at the face of Mary, um, Elizabeth, he took him up. He took Elizabeth up. He wiped his face himself and used it to cover the face of Elizabeth, to rub the face of Elizabeth. And he held his hand, the Elizabeth's hand. And Jesus turned to his glory in heaven. And right there, I saw it. Elizabeth herself turned changed to the same glory with Jesus. The Bible says, we don't know how we will look like. But when he comes, we will be like him. That is what you ought to be looking for. How to be like Jesus should be your ultimate desire. Not things of this world that will soon perish. There is a song, the song of hallelujah, that they used to welcome people with in heaven. That song came from heaven, entered the hall of salvation, and Jesus and Elizabeth were lifted up and they went up. When the, the Lord Jesus and the Elizabeth gone, it was as if Elizabeth 
cause problem in that hall. Come and see how the judgment looks like. It was terrible. Within 30 minutes, what am I saying? Within 10 minutes, the remaining people in that hall were not up to 50,000. Judgment was severe, fast, and terrible. Then we call somebody. The angel will look at the face of the person from the head to the toe of his feet. Look at the screen. There is sin in his life. You will hear the voice, depart. Then we call another person. Depart. Then we call another person. Depart. Then we call another person. Depart. Then we, I was just saying, hey, 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 hey. I was running up at now. As if the Lord should open our mouth and that we enter into it. It was as if I should see somebody should throw me out of that hall. Or something should throw me out of that hall. It was terrible. I was just shouting, Jesus, Jesus. I remember every sin I have ever committed. Every sin. The time I called myself reverend that I was committing fornication with women in the church, I remembered all. The time I called myself pastor that I, 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 I committed fornication with women in the church and I abated swiss pregnancy, I remembered all. I was saying, hey, 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 God. Hey, hey. Sometimes, People will see money in the church and they will bring it to my office and they say, Pastor, uh, we see this money and I will say, go and buy malt, buy bread. Abraham, thief. Money that is not belonging to me. I remember everything. When you get to the judgment hall, you will remember every sin you committed. Everyone. I was like, then the judgment came to one man of God. Brethren, God has no respecter of anybody. I repeat, no matter who you are in the church, forget it. It was when you are here. God has no respecter of anybody. Anybody. Be you president, governor, whatever you may be, king. Anybody on earth, God has no respecter of anybody. The only person God will respect is the person that we hear about God's judgment ahead. And he will cry for mercy. That is the only person that God will respect. To. This man of God served God for 36 years. He was a general overseer, the founder of a church. All through the days of, a, of his life, he was preaching holiness. He was preaching righteousness. He preached against sin. Listen to me. When this man appeared before the judgment of God, and the angel sighed for the man, he looked at him from the head to the tone of his feet. And he looked at the screen. Small sin of anger. Very small sin of anger appeared on the screen. Listen to me. I'm not saying, of, I'm not saying small sin of uh, fornication. No? Small sin of adultery. I'm not saying small sin of stealing church money. I'm not saying small sin of uh, fighting every day. Small sin of drinking alcoholic. No! Small sin of anger. Just a little sin of anger appear on the screen. And when it appeared, the angel shouted. The whole place was shaking. He looked at the man. And he said, you man of God. With all the suffering you suffered on earth. The day you have to eat. And the day there was no food. The day you fasted. The day you prayed in the night. All through the night. Why didn't you allow this sin, small sin of anger to be washed away from you before you come to this place? The man was shouting, please, 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 please. It is the devil. It is the devil. It is the devil. Please, it is the devil. Please. And the angel said, if you see the devil, can you say it before his presence? And the man said, yes, I will say it. I will say it, please. 
Then the angel stretched forth his right, left hand. The devil appeared. Tall, black in complexion. He wore red and black clothes on that night. On that day. That terrible day. And the angel said, Lucifer, do you know this man? <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm a I didn't want to come back again. You are the one that I said I should come back. <laughs> Then the devil said, Yes, I know him. He said, He has destroyed my work so much. And the angel said, Why he wants to leave the sin of anger? You did not allow him to leave it. And Lucifer in devil went to the man and said. Look at my face. Look at what I wear now. At the left, red and black by the right side. I have so many clothes that I wear. The day you wanted to leave the sin of anger that I did not allow you to leave it, what kind of cloth did I wear that day? Then the man was saying, eh, 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 eh. and the devil disappeared. When the devil disappeared, the man was pleading. He looked at the angel and said, please, please, please have mercy on me. The angel said, I don't have any power to deliver you. <laughs> please. He looked at everybody. Please deliver me. Please, please. So, the voice came from heaven. <laughs> we heard the voice. Depart. <laughs> the wind came and carried the man up. The man shouted. He shouted with all his voice. He was looking at every one of us. He was saying, please deliver me. Please deliver me. Please deliver me. Please deliver me. I'm doomed. I am doomed. I am doomed. The wind threw him away to hell. Rise up on your feet. Be wise. Escape for your dear life. Don't joke with the judgment ahead. God has no respect of anybody in judgment. Lift up your two hands to God and cry from the bosom of your heart. I say, God, deliver me. Wash me from the sin I have ever committed. I don't want to die and go to hell. Lord, deliver me. Open your mouth and pray to God in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, Jesus, Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Look at me now, Jesus, please. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> If there is any sin in my life now, use your blood to wash me now. Wash me before it is too late. 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 Escape 
for your dear life. Your soul is precious. Be wise. Be wise. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear what the Lord told me. Listen to this. The Lord said, Abraham, among all the people that are present here tonight, that, listen, listen well, the people that their names are in the book of life right now are 30 in number. Listen. He said, out of that 30 in number, hey, God, he says 29 out of them's name are fading. Fading away. Out of 30 number. Do you hear what I say? I will repeat myself. God said, out of everyone that are present here tonight, those that their names are in the book of life are 30 in number. He said, but the 29 out of them, their names are fading away. Then he said, tell these people to love their precious soul. Listen to me. Forget about your position. Earthly position. And in the spiritual position. Forget about that. God said, the people that their names are in the book of life before now are 30 in number. 29 names are fading away. <sighs> Sir, what shall it profit me if I shout everywhere and at last I hear the word depart? God forbid. I'd rather die here tonight than that my name will not be in the book of life. The Bible says if there is anybody, that anybody, whoever you may be, if your name is not written in the book of life, will be cast into the lake of fire. That is the word of God. Forget about what you have done in the church. This man did more than you. General Overseer preached holiness for 36 years. Small anger took him to hell. Now listen to this. I'm talking to people who are wise. I'm not talking to fools. Please have mercy on me for what I said. I am not talking to fools. The fool have said in his heart, is a lie. That's a fool. That's a fool. That's a fool. That's a fool. I'm talking to the wise. The wise that will be humble before the Almighty. That are not ready to face the judgment of God. That want God to have mercy on them. If you are the wise, as you are praying this prayer, with all humility of heart, you come forward here. To come and cry to God. The prayer we are going to pray tonight is, God, write my name in the book of life. That is a prayer for tonight. I want you to lift up your hands. And say, God, here am I. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to experience the bitterness, the horribleness, the danger, eh? the peril in hell. I want to make heaven God. I pray tonight, forgive all my sin. Wash all my sin away. Jesus, here am I. I come before you, oh God. Have mercy on me tonight. Have mercy on me oh, tonight. Blot my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. And if you want mercy of God tonight, you want the mercy of God tonight, you want the mercy of God tonight, come forward here. Come forward here. Come forward here. God bless you as you are coming forward. God bless you as you are coming forward. God bless you as you are coming forward. You that need the mercy of God. 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 You want your name to be written in the book of life. You don't deceive yourself. You that deceive is deceiving yourself. Continue deceiving yourself until that will come and hold, get hold of you. But you that is not deceiving yourself, come forward. 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 Cry to God. Cry to God. 
cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Cry to God. Thy God, oh God. Wash my sin away. How much you have been, Jesus? Wash my sin away. Wash my sin away. Don't let me go to hell. 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 Jesus, you died because of me. You suffered because of me. They crown you with a crown of stone because of me. You were nailed at the cross because of me. <laughs> How much you love me, oh God? How much you love me, oh God? How much you love me, oh God? In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, listen to the voice of God. Thus says the Lord. You that trust on your wealth. Your wealth will be nothing after your death. You that trust on your position in the church. Your position will fade away after your death. You that trust on what you have done in the church. Everything you've done in the church will be nothing if you die in your sin. Repent before it is too late. Repent before it is too late. Be wise and escape for your dear life, says the Lord God Almighty. Lift up your two hands, everybody. I want you to cry at the top of your voice to God. Call the name of Jesus. And say, God, deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. From the power of sin. Save me tonight. Save me tonight. Jesus. Save me tonight. Write my name in the book of life. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus, 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 you cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sin, that no one else should know. You cannot hide it from God. Jesus, save me tonight. Save my soul. Save my soul. 
Sell my soul. Sell my mother soul. Sell my mother soul. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You died for me. You died for me. Sell my soul. 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 How much of me? Write my name in the book of life tonight. Save my soul. Save my soul. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Save my soul. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. 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 <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen to this. There is announcement from heaven that 50 people's name are now written in the book of life. Why are you saying amen? What about your own name? Cry at the top of your voice. And say, Lord, forgive all my sin. I write in my name in the book of life now. Write my name now. Open your mouth and pray. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If there is anyone that will perish, it shouldn't be me, Lord. If there is anyone that will go to hell, it shouldn't be me, Lord. If there is anybody that will die and go to hell, it shouldn't be me, Lord. Write my name, Lord, in the book of life. Let my name be written in the book of life tonight. 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 Tonight, tonight, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes and look at me. I saw the Lord Jesus weeping. Daddy, as he was weeping, he was saying, I want to write the name of these people in the book of life, but yet many of them are not ready. He was weeping. The Lord was weeping. He said, I want to write their name in the book of life, but they are not ready. I want you to lift up your hands to God. God, if it will remain only one person that will be saved, let that person be me tonight. If it remains only one person that you are going to save, God, here am I. Save my soul tonight. Write my name in the book of life. Open your mouth and pray. Our dear daddy, be 
Bishop elect will come to pray for you now. But before then, pray. I said, God, please write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. Write my name in the book of life. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at something. As I just opened my eyes, I saw this child on the altar. I don't know who brought the child here. And God said, as you carry this child, so I want to carry all of them. But many of them are not ready. I wanted to give the child to someone here. He said, no, don't give the child to the person. I want to make an example. That is why I let the child to come here. I don't know how the child came here. And I don't know who brought the child. But the Lord said to me, as you are carrying the baby, so I want to carry all of them, but many of them are not ready. You will cry before my Lord Bishop come and pray for you. Lord, I am ready. Deliver me tonight. Save my soul. Lord Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Open your mouth and pray. Listen. Please, everybody should sit down if you have a seat to sit. Okay, thank you, sir. When the judgment came to my turn, that they made mention of my name, I have judged myself. I said, Abraham, every day is for thief and a day for the owner. And the day of the owner has come. I knew how I lived my life before I received the mercy of God like the one you received today. But as they made mention of my name, Abraham Yakubu, before I said, Sir, I am already at the front of that angel. And when it was my turn that his judgment eyes, the countenance, the reflection that was that like that of consuming fire, off as if somebody off touch light, and the face of the beautiful face of an angel appeared before his face. He shook me and he said, proceed. I pray for somebody here that the day you will appear before the judgment hall of salvation, the word you will hear to that day will be proceed in Jesus' name. As I was moving forward on the narrow way, I got to another hall. I told you yesterday that that hall you are going to pass through before you get to the kingdom of God or the heavenly border are 23 in numbers. And this second hall was named the hall of restitution. Brethren, restitution is real. The meaning of restitution is you restoring back what is not belonging to you. 
The thing that you are not the rightful owner that is with you, you will have to restore them back to the rightful owner. If you stole any shoe, cloth, Bible, handkerchief, Bible, hymn book, in the church, that is not your possession. I mean, you are not the, the owner. And they are in your house, in your office. You will need to restore them back to the rightful owner. If you do not restore them back, and you die, you get to the hall of restitution, it is from that place you will go to hell. Let me read two verses of the scriptures for you so that you will get what I'm saying. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 33, I read from verse 12. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of my people, okay, I hear daddy. I start reading from verse 11. Say unto them, as, as I live, say the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die? O house of Israel, O people that are sitting down here in manifestation 2012. In verse 12, Therefore thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous, shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wicked of the weak, the, as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day righteousness in the day that he sinned. Look at verse 13. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he had committed, he shall die for it. Now verse 14 to 16. Again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If, if he turn from a sin like the one you did now, and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, and later part, give again that he had robbed the one he had stole, or stolen, walk in the states of life, in the status of life, without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sin that he had committed shall be mentioned unto him. He had done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. The one that is lawful is that he had repented. The, the, the one that is right is that he restored back everything he has stolen. Anything that is not yours, that are in your possession, you have to restore them back to the rightful owner. If you want to make heaven, if anything is with you that is not yours, you do not restore them back before you die, my brother, you are going to hell. I want to show you the example of somebody in the book of Judges. That is the second part of the scripture that we are going to read before we pray. Judges chapter 17, there was this young man that was living in a far country. He, she, he came to her, to his mother, and uh, when he visited the mother, he saw money that the mother kept. She stole the money. He went back to where he came from. And in that place, he had the message on the salvation. He gave his life to Christ and he had the message of restitution. He came back to the mother. See what happened. In Judges chapter 17, I read verse 1 and 2 and verse 3. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, the 1100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou caudest, caudest, and spake of also in my ear, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. He confessed. The money that you are looking for, when I came home last time, I, that we were looking for together, I took it. I'm the one who stole the money. Look at verse 3. And he restored the 1100 shekel of silver to his mother. He gave back the money to his mother. And in verse 1 
the mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. The mother has caused the person that stole the money, but when the child restored that back the money, the, man, the mother blessed the child. If anything, there is something you have on your home, in your office, in your company that is not belonging to you, if you want to make heaven, go and restore the thing to the rightful owner. Women, if you stole money from your husband's pocket, oh, you said I did not steal it. I took it. Yes, it's not yours. It's not yours. There is no time now. I would have told you people that did the same thing as you did that went to hell because of what they did. If you are a rich man here, you bought about two acres of land in a place. Somebody who is poor struggled and bought a land, one plot. And because of your ability, authority, and because of whom you are in the kingdom, you take about 10 feet out of that land. From 